Well, welcome everybody. My name is Corbin. I'm the undergraduate enrollment advisor and I'm here tonight to uh, talk with you guys about our health promotion and education program. So we're really excited to have you. Like I said, my name is Corbin. I will be your host. Uh, there, that, my, my contact information is here on the screen for you. If you have any questions later, feel free to send me an email or give me a call. I will be happy to assist you. So uh, really excited right now to introduce some of our guest panelists tonight that are here to talk to you about our program. So we have, and if you guys want to go ahead and unmute yourselves, turn your, feel free to turn your videos on now. Uh, we have Professor Reagan Johnson and Dr. Julia Buchanan, program coordinators and professors in the program, and Kelsey Smothers, a student in the program. Hello. Hey, was that you, Reagan? Yes, it says I can't get my video going, so. Oh, yeah, oh, mine's okay. the same way. No worries. Here, let me do that for you. There, there we you go. Are. Hello. Hey, welcome. Thanks for being here. Happy to be here. And this is Dr. Nice. Julia Buchanan. I actually am calling in. I'm not using the video feature, so I apologize. But I think you have my headshot there on the last page. Um, but yes, thank you all for, for being here and coming in to ask some questions and learn more about our major. Hi, I'm Kelsey. It still won't let me um, be on the video. There you go. I think I had it off oh, There for we you. go. Hi. Hi, Kelsey. <laughs> Hi, Professor Johnson. Hi, Pro right. Hi, Professor Buchanan. All right, thanks for being here tonight, guys. Um, for the majority of the presentation, I'm going to have you guys turn your videos off. We can turn it back on towards the end. Um, you can just keep your audios on if you want to. So first of all, congratulations. Uh, for those of you that are admitted for the fall in our health promotion education program here at UC, we're so excited to have you guys and that you're interested in attending the University of Cincinnati. Um, so very excited to be here tonight to talk to you more about this program and just to share some, share some information with you, especially during this time of, you know, unfortunately we can't meet in person, which is what we would prefer to be doing right about now uh, and doing things on campus. But since we can't do that, this is our next best thing. And I uh, wanted to bring some of the voices in this program to you uh, students as you're thinking about your next steps and what you're looking to do. So just going to give you an overview of what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, we'll do a little of the, bit of the program overview, just talking about the program, letting you hear from you know the, pro the professors and program coordinators, the ones that are just on the ground working with these students, teaching the courses. Uh, and then, you know, Kelsey's here to help shed some light into maybe life as a student and what does that look like uh, for someone coming into the university and some of the resources available to you. And then we'll certainly have time for, for Q&A. So if you have questions, feel free to post them in the chat on Facebook there. Uh, we will address them either as they come in or maybe save some towards the end depending on the questions. Uh, so just kind of a program overview. This program, the Health Promotion and Education program has, is going to have two uh, different uh, unique tracks or pathways for students to, to uh, focus on. And so we'll, we'll do each one individually. <clears throat> And we'll start with the public and community health program with, with Dr. Reagan John, or Professor Reagan Johnson and talking about how, you know, this program is really designed to prepare students to really educate the public, right? You know, you want to work within the community, work with people and, um, and, and the importance of that. So I'm going to let you, Professor Johnson, talk a little bit about the purpose of this program. You know, some, some students might wonder, you know, what does this mean? What, what do I do in this degree? And so I shared a little bit of light into, you know, the purpose of for someone going in that pathway. Absolutely. So um, I do uh, work mostly with the public and community health students in the health promotion education track. And these are students that really want to help people and want to, um, you know, make change in their community. So these are individuals that, you know, are can work in a variety of settings. We've got students that go and work in um, state organizations like health departments and um, or uh, like local health departments or state health departments. We've got students that want to go and work in worksite wellness. So maybe they want to um, do employee wellness or corporate wellness programs, which I know we have a little um, some examples here as well. Uh, but really just learning to um, assess community needs, develop interventions, and evaluate those interventions so that you can make change within the places that you like to work. Uh, we have a lot of real world opportunities for our students. So we have 
um, classes, even within the classroom where you would be doing service learning and getting some experience within the classroom. Um, but we also have an internship opportunity for students at the very end. So there's a, a 12 credit hour internship that you do your final semester where you actually get experience working in the field and you're able to pick that opportunity, you know, what, what uh, area interests you. So some of those places that our students have gone are locally are places like the American Heart Association, the American Cancer Society, um, Tri Health. Um, we've had people at uh, Procter & Gamble or um, GE um, working in, in wellness. We also have individuals that are working in wellness at even at the University of Cincinnati doing employee wellness type programming. So there's lots of uh, opportunities for our students to gain that experience uh, within their internships, but also within the classroom. And individuals that once you complete the degree, you're el eligible to sit for the CHES exam, which is the Certified Health Education Specialist exam. Um, and so that is a um, nationally recognized um, credential that you would be able to sit for after that. Okay, awesome. And, and Kelsey, is this the track that you're in as well? Yes, that is. Okay, maybe talk a little bit about what you've been doing with that, with that track and some of the maybe experiences you've been able to take advantage of. Yeah, so last summer of 2019, I was at um, UC's worksite wellness program at, with Be Well UC, and there I did a couple different things. I created some of the challenges that the employees could take part of. I did their um, health screenings where I took um, employees' blood pressure and I gave them feedback on things that they could work on, things like that. Um, and then this semester, um, I am at Prevention First, working to prevent substance abuse um, among the Cincinnati area, well, the greater Ohio area, and then some of Northern Kentucky and some of um, Southeast Indiana as well. And there I've been doing a bunch of different things where I've been working on grants that we've gotten. I've worked on doing some environmental scans, going around and looking at the marketing of like alcohol and other drugs, of what businesses, what they're promoting. A um, bunch of different things like that. So that's probably the most recent experience that I've had with um, this program here. Okay, awesome. And I think we'll definitely be coming back to some of that. Um, Professor Johnson, was there anything you wanted to add about this specific track? No, I don't think so about the track in general. Okay, cool. Um, and then let's talk a little bit about the exercise and fitness track, which is the other option within this program um, with uh, Professor Buchanan. So talking a little bit about the purpose of what students are doing in this track um, and how they're building the, a career around that. Yeah, so within the exercise and fitness track, it's um, more recent, I would say, where we've made some major changes to the program to really enhance it in the last few years. So we're really excited about it. Um, not only do both tracks, I will say, um, do share some similar core classes, but um, usually around the third year, <clears throat> that's where the tracks really start to differentiate. And so the exercise and fitness track would enable students upon graduation to sit for the certified uh, health education specialist that was mentioned on the last slide and in addition to that with our curriculum modifications that we have made we are now giving students the ability upon graduation to also sit for the american college of sports medicine um, exercise physiologist exam and that's a credential that requires a bachelor's degree in this field and the way I like to explain it, I think in the simplest terms of what an exercise physiologist would be able to do versus um, a personal trainer, personal trainers are qualified to work with generally healthy populations, whereas exercise physiologists can work with individuals with chronic disease and other controlled um, types of disease in more of kind of a medical type of setting. And so that just gives students more opportunities upon graduation. Um, we do have a lot of courses and I'm thinking we're probably going to look at some of the courses that students will take here in a few minutes, but um, a lot of courses related to how to not only understand anatomy and physiology and exercise physiology and things like that, but then how to apply it on an individual basis as well. Um, so essentially the exercise and fitness track, again, sort of shares that health promotion 
core, but then also has some specific courses related to nutrition and physical activity and whatnot. Um, just like with the track that was just spoke about, the exercise and fitness students also have to do the um, internship, the 12 credit internship at the end. Um, we also have some lab courses woven throughout the curriculum and other opportunities for service learning throughout the curriculum as well. But uh, the major internship, we've got students who a lot of them are going into like, uh, worksite wellness as well, kind of in corporate type settings. We have students who are they're, we're pretty lucky here in Cincinnati because we've got a lot of, you know, sports world is pretty prevalent, not only at the professional level, but also high school and colleges as well and youth sports so there's a lot of opportunities for students to get exposure with strength and conditioning working with uh, a lot of them work right here with uc athletics but we've got the Bengals. there are several private entities that train athletes at all different levels so we have a lot of students going out doing that uh, students working with older populations and nonprofits like YMCA's in personal training or boutique studios. So there's really a wide range of um, public recreation departments. There's really a wide range depending on what students are really interested in the exercise and fitness um, setting and even medical settings. Yeah, that's awesome. And students can even, you know, yeah. right, right at the very beginning, kind of start getting some experience with our very own rec center. Is that correct? Yes, and with our rec center. So that's one of the things that I was going to mention. Um, I see you have personal training certifications there at the bottom. Uh, we actually have a course dedicated, it's an elective course with two of them. One that is allows students to become prepared to sit for a personal trainer exam and one that leads to group fitness instructor exam. So you only have to be 18 and with a valid government ID and a CPR 80 certification to sit for those. So we encourage students right from the beginning to go ahead and get certified in those areas, start gaining experience, whether it's right on campus at the rec center or locally, um, because then upon graduation, you can sit for those advanced level certifications and already have a lot of experience under their belt. That's awesome. See, that's great. You know, both tracks, you provide these opportunities for students to really start getting these experiences and not just at the end of the program before you, you know, you have that internship, which is awesome. We have this full-time internship that you can really go and do things wherever you have the opportunity, but you're also doing things from the very first, when you first start the program and getting experiences that in other ways as well, which is really great. Um, I do want to kind of go into the curriculum aspect as well and, and talk a little bit about that. So uh, I know there's going to be a lot of similarity with the first year courses, uh, but with public and community health, this is kind of an example of the courses someone would probably take in the fall or spring semester of their first year. Um, and we'll start with uh, Professor Johnson, maybe expanding on a little bit of some of the courses that happen. If you do, you, do you teach any of these specific courses? Sure. Um, no, actually, um, I do not. So usually um, we have, so oftentimes our first year students coming in will be taking a lot of courses with um, Professor Amanda, who is a um, fantastic professor that our students get to love, and she's a great uh, person to, to start them off in their career. So um, she starts by teaching them the Principles and Foundations course. So you're going to jump right in as a first year student and get to know, you know, what is health promotion education all about? What can you do with this type of degree? degree? She brings people in that are working in the field um, and actually has uh, them present to the class and talk about how they got where they are. And so it's a great way for students to already start building that network and get an idea of what they want to you know, what they might want to do, what type of population they might want to work with, uh, even as a first year student. So those are some, uh, like that class, um, Intro to Public and Community Health, the same thing, learning about what is public health, what does it look like, what are some other opportunities to work in public health. So some great classes to start off with. And as you see, there are some elective options as well. So within our, within our classes, we have a lot of opportunity for students to choose classes based on their interests. So some of the, um, those elective classes might be very much um, a specific type of course, such as um, human sexuality or drugs in society or whatever it might be, where it's very specific to a particular topic or women's health issues. So students have opportunities to really pick which classes that they want to take. And then you'll notice that there are some courses labeled HFL. And so those are elective op options for students as well. And those are one credit hour health and wellness type courses that you can pick from. So there's everything from yoga or physical conditioning to classes like 
financial wellness or stress reduction or healthy cooking. So a lot of opportunities for students to um, choose and kind of select the classes that they're really interested in. Gotcha. And Kelsey, since you're here, maybe you speak a little bit about what were some of the courses that you really enjoyed, especially your first year? Um, my first year was a little different because I actually transferred into the program. Um, oh, good to know. So I did really enjoy personal health. Um, that one, it was a, in a lecture hall and I don't even remember who my professor was, <laughs> honestly. Um, but she was super cool and outgoing. And at the end of the semester, we got to do a project where we picked a personal health goal of ours and we worked I guess not at the end of the semester, it was due at the end of the semester, but we worked on it throughout the semester on our personal goal and what we wanted to improve on. And so we, each student got to pick their own thing, which I think that was helpful for us to be able to understand like behavior change and what we uh, as individuals need to do to work on that. Okay, awesome. And just out of curiosity, did you know when you came into this program, did you know which track you wanted to do? Um, no, I didn't know at first. Okay, so how did you kind of come to the conclusion uh, as far as the track that you chose? Um, just by taking the different courses, because um, I think I took a couple. What I took a couple health and fitness classes, and then I was like, yeah, I don't really want to do more of the exercise stuff. I wanted to be more out in the community and what I could do to be more involved in helping other people in those aspects of life rather than on um, the exercise and fitness track. And I actually what. Another thing that helped me was um, I took a course in the substance abuse counseling program and me realizing that I wanted to be a part of substance abuse prevention and treatment helped me realize that as well. Okay, so you've really had a lot of freedom as to kind of how you want to build your degree around this area. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. I'm getting some questions here. You know, what you said you transferred, you, you transferred into this program. Um, what was your first major? Um, athletic training. Okay, gotcha. And so when you switched programs, how was that process for you? Um, it was very easy, actually. So I didn't transfer schools or anything. I was still at UC, but I was in the athletic training program. And at the time, it was my first semester, freshman year, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I thought I wanted to be an athletic trainer. And very quickly, I realized I did not want to be that. So I went to my advisor and I asked her what I could do and what were some options for me. And so she asked like what I was interested in. And so she gave me health education as the best fit for me. And after that, most, most of my credits just automatically transferred over into the program. And after that is when I got started. Okay, awesome. Um, and then the exercise and fitness track uh, as you can see, some similar courses, but there is there does seem, seem to be a little bit of a differentiation with some of the options there. And maybe <clears throat> Professor Buchanan, you can expound a little bit on the, on the courses within this track. Yeah, like I mentioned, there's in, the, in those first two years, um, really the first year especially, there is a lot of um, overlap and shared courses within the core with the public and community health track, but um, some differences here with exercise and fitness specifically, they do have the HFL requirement in that first semester fall, um, but we do require students to take physical conditioning. It's just a course uh, similar to what Kelsey was talking about with personal health and physical conditioning. Students are uh, taught kind of the right way to program or to create an, their own individual exercise program based on their specific goals. Um, but in this class, they're actually executing it as well um, during the class time. It's held at the rec center with an instructor. So that course is a requirement for students in this track. Um, it helps them kind of set a foundation to build off of as they advance throughout the program. Um, and I believe the rest of the courses are um, the same. There may be some switching between whether they take those courses fall or spring from the other track, but um, similar and a lot of freedom there, um, likewise with electives and things like that. Okay, awesome. Um, and now um, I, do, I do have a question that I kind of want to address over here. So for students that are here in this program that might have a thought of like uh, a nursing pathway, what does that look like for someone who, ha who does have an interest in nursing? You know, do, you, do you deal with students that have had that interest and in, in, what does that look like? Yeah, 
um, perhaps Reagan can answer this as well, but um, just from my perspective, um, sometimes we do have students that do transfer over into our program because they are taking some of our um, electives that are more popular across the university, like personal health that a lot of majors take, and they just really see an interest in community health and they want to enter into this major. But we also have students who opt to, who may be in other majors that um, want to do our minors. We actually do have a health education minor um, as well if they want that, some of the, that coursework. But maybe Reagan can expand a little bit further too. Yeah, I think we do have, and not just nursing, but we do have students that sometimes um, start with our degree or they, they get an undergrad in um, our program and maybe want to do something a little bit more clinical, like um, they might get a nursing degree or they might want to go to PT school or something like that. And so usually what we would do is have them work very closely with their um, advisor because we do not take a lot of science courses our students don't in our program and so what often they'll do is they'll encourage them there you know there's a lot of uh, electives to, that students can take so they would encourage them to maybe fill their um, schedule with some of those courses that maybe they would need if they were going to pursue another degree or um, you know after they went through the program. Gotcha. Okay. Um, anything else that um, Professor Buchanan that you wanted to add about the tracks and exercise and fitness or the courses in exercise and fitness? Um, I don't think so at this point. Okay, cool. Um, so as we kind of go into the next part here, talk a little bit about uh, life as a student um, here at UC and at CCH. And granted, life as a student right now looks very different than what many of our students were probably thinking it was going to look like at, at this time. And so, uh, you know, we're all kind of transitioning to a new way of doing things and, and really trying to do what we can to assist our students as, as much as we can. Uh, but when we are on campus, there are a lot of things that are important for students to be mindful of and resources that are available to them. Uh, of course, faculty are huge resources and uh, do, they do a lot for our students. And so another important resource is going to be academic advisors, because uh, these are the individuals that are working with students to help them figuring out, you know, are they staying on track with their schedule? Um, are there other things that they need to be mindful of on campus? How to find tutoring? Uh, different kinds of on-campus uh, places for students to be mindful of, and, and they're just great resources for our students in the college, and you do have an assigned advisor. Uh, so Kelsey, maybe speak a little bit into, you know, what the role an, advi an academic advisor has played for you in your program. Yeah, the advisors are super helpful. Um, we're actually known on campus for having one of the best advising staff, which is super helpful. Um, so my first advisor in the program, I actually had Sam Myers. He's wearing just the blue um, dad Superman shirt. He was super helpful in the program. When I transferred into the program, he helped me make sure that I was staying on track because I was a semester behind. So I didn't know if I was going to graduate on time. And he actually helped me out so much that I could have graduated early if I wanted to. Um, and then I switched when things got moved around. I had Ethan and Ethan and Sam both made it super easy to transition from advisor um, in that time period just because I was really nervous at first about switching over to having someone else who didn't know like my background with the switching of programs and everything. And they were really helpful. They made me feel comfortable in my decisions and everything like that. They were super supportive. Um, and they're there not to just talk to you about school and like your program. They're there, they're there for anything for you. Um, Sam would talk to me about all my other things going on in life and same as Ethan. So um, if, any students had any issues with that, that would be pretty crazy because the advisors in this college are awesome. I have nothing but good things to say about them. Okay, awesome, very cool. Uh, and then thinking about campus life a little bit. Can I um, um, add just something really quickly back to that absolutely. advising piece? Absolutely. Um, I think, like Kelsey said, I think you know our college is well known across the campus as having some of the best advisors. And just from a faculty perspective, we work very closely with the advisors. Um, they're just one floor below us in the same building, which you don't always find at a lot of universities and you know where every, they're so connected there. So I just wanted to add in that piece as well. You know, I'm so glad you did. That's, that's definitely an area I think I, I forget about, but yeah, you guys work so great. Uh, that relationship with the advisors and the faculty, I think is an important part to 
to discuss or to bring up. And so I'm glad you said that. Um, and then campus life. So a lot of things uh, do happen on our campus. I think it's one of those things that students, you know, until you visit a campus, you never really know if it's something that is going to be for you. And so um, here you see there's a lot of things happening on campus. Uh, Kelsey, did you did you live on campus your first year? Yeah, I lived at Turner Hall. Turner Hall. Okay, so maybe speak a little bit about what was it like living on campus? You know, what was the dorm life like for you and what were some of the things that you took advantage of on campus? So I would definitely recommend living on campus your first year for sure. Um, it definitely gives you more of that college life feel and helps you grow to be like independent and learning it's just basic things that your parents used to do for you that now you have to do for yourself. Um, the only thing I do recommend to students that I wish I would have done is I wish that I would have lived in a more social dorm. Um, at the time, Turner was one of the newer dorms and they were they're the suite style dorm, so you had your own bathroom and everything, but it is it is really nice, but at the same time, the floors just aren't as social as like Calhoun or Daniels or Sadal are with living in the traditional dorm, so that's my only regret about living in Turner, but it's just nice being on campus. It's super convenient for your classes. Um, you're close to center court. You're close to um, the rec center. You're just close to everything that's on campus. So it's so much more convenient. Um, and even no matter what dorm you're at, you're not gonna be far from your class, which is really nice about this campus because our campus to me is just like a giant square. And so it, your farthest class won't take you any more than 10 or 15 minutes to get to, which is super helpful, especially in the winter time when it's really cold. Yeah, I've heard 15 minutes if you're on time, 10 minutes if you're late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, very cool. So um, what is what was your favorite dining hall to, to go to? Um, well, at the time we didn't have um, I don't, on the green. So I haven't really had that one. But at the I guess stadium view, or um, what's the one market market point are probably two of the more better ones, I guess I could say center court is just really convenient of where it's located. Not that it's bad by any means, but it's definitely not as good as Market Point in my opinion. Um, but Market Point has Tender Tuesdays, which are always a thing to go to. Definitely, I'll check that out. And then Stadium View always has cheeseburgers, which are really good too. Awesome. And now a question for all of you, you know, we're thinking about some of the other maybe restaurants on or around campus. What are some of your favorite restaurants? Well, um, the, my favorite restaurant is actually Thai Express. So it's like a little hole in the wall restaurant, but I have the best Pad Thai I've ever had, so. <laughs> yeah, and I, um, this is Dr. Buchanan, I think we're very lucky in where our building is for our college because we are pretty close to a lot of really great options. My personal favorite is Bibby Bop, um, and then I do, I, it was a close second for Thai Express for me. I've never had Thai Express, but that will be something I'll try since you both enjoy it. Um, my favorite, I guess it just depends because I'm not from Cincinnati area. And so we don't have Canes where I'm from and we don't have Bippy Bop. So those are two probably close of my favorites. And I also love Mr. Sushi. Okay. So for those of you that are hearing, if you find yourself on campus soon, there's some good places to check out as well. I also get this debate often, but if you had to pick your favorite pizza spot, what would it be? Adriatico's 100%. <laughs> Same. I agree. Everyone's for Adriatico's. Okay. I also live not even a block. I live on the same street as it, so it's really convenient for me to go there. But their okay. buffalo chicken egg rolls are the way to go. Okay. Very good to know. Very good to know. Um, and I know our rec center is a pretty, um, pretty awesome spot on campus. It's, I, I believe it's one of the top rec centers in the country. Um, and it's a, definitely a great environment for, for students. And we find many of our, uh, the students in this program, you know, spending some time there, whether they're for personal health and fitness or, you know, many of the students might be. Uh, now, are, they, are they working in the fitness center? Is that, is that something that they're able to do? 
Yeah, there's plenty of opportunities. We have a great relationship with the rec center um, and a, a few partnerships that we have going on. But uh, yeah, we highly encourage students. They want our students to work there. Um, but a great way to gain experience, students working from, you know, monitoring the fitness floor to being personal trainers, group fitness instructors. So there's a lot of different opportunities there. So if they're looking for a part-time job, that's a great way to get experience and, and have something there. Absolutely. Okay, awesome. And so uh, one of the things I like to bring up, primarily because it's something I, I, I kind of wish I had done in college, but you know, there's a lot of opportunities for, for students to go global and diversify their experiences, maybe do some sort of international experience. You might see short-term trips if you wanted to go and explore a different a place you've never been before, or if you wanted to do something more long-term and do some sort of a study abroad experience. We certainly have resources on campus to assist you. Um, is this something that anyone can maybe speak on some student experiences and if you know of anyone that's done something in this program? Um, I'll speak a little bit about this. We, we've do a, um, a trip every year out of our program, although we do have done a study abroad trip before. Um, a couple years ago, students went to Belize. We had both undergrad and graduate students that went to Belize on a trip. It was, I believe it was a week long trip. Um, however, we have had a lot of students that have studied abroad in different, um, and gone different places and done different things. So we've had students that have um, gone through the study abroad office here on campus. So there are lots of opportunities um, and they found them through the study abroad office. But we've also have students that have taken courses outside of other, within other colleges like arts and sciences, for example, and they were able to go on a study, um, study abroad trip with a, with a class that they are a part of. So whether it be just for a few weeks or even spending a whole semester in another country. And now with the intern, I'm just kind of curious with the internship piece, if someone were to have an opportunity to do an intern, international internship, is that something that's available or an opportunity that, that could be out there for students? Yeah, absolutely. We actually, um, I want to say last spring we had a, or summer, we had a student that went to Tanzania for the um, semester and was actually doing public health work in Tanzania. Okay, wow, that's awesome. Um, Kelsey, I, I'm not sure. Is there anything that you would want to add to this or have you participated in anything with this? No, I haven't. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Um, and then student organizations. So um, I would bring this up because there's a lot of ways for students to get experiences or get other experiences and get be involved on campus and students that are involved on campus tend to do better academically. So we really encourage you to do that. You know, we have the two kind of listed there just within our own college, like the CCH Tribunal, which is a student government organization and uh, CCH Ambassadors that, that Kelsey is, is directly a part of. Uh, but what are some other groups and clubs that uh, that you might recommend students to check out, Kelsey? Um, so Ambassadors is definitely one of them. It's a good resume builder. Um, I'm also part of athletics, so I'm a cheerleader for UC. And so that has gotten me to be able to do so many different things. I've been able to travel to games. I've been able to meet with alumni. And I actually was able to get a scholarship my sophomore year through an alumni that I had no idea she even knew me that well, but she just, I just met her at a game and she loved me. And so she um, gave me a scholarship. Um, there's also, a, there's just so many different organizations on campus. If you like dogs, I would say four paws for ability is the way to go. You can either dog sit dogs or you can foster one for a semester and you get to train them on how to be a service dog. And obviously you get the training to do that. Um, I think there's a milkshake club. There's so many different options that you can pick from. And if you don't find one that you enjoy, you can create your own as well. Yeah, and, and it's funny because there's, there's so many clubs that you think, I even just recently heard about a squirrel watching club. It's like someone just created that. <laughs> uh, so there's just so many things that students can be involved with, you know, whatever things that you're interested in or that you have a passion for, you wanna keep that as a part of your life. I encourage you to look into that and check out those groups. Um, how easy is it to find those sort of things? Um, I would say it's pretty easy. I think you can just go on UC's website and look at all the different organizations. And um, I think you just email them and see how you can get involved. 
or I know like four paws is a Facebook page that you, that you contact through. Um, I think it just depends on the organization, but it's not hard at all. Okay, cool. Um, uh, one thing just to piggyback off of that, um, yeah. a lot of our students, we are not directly involved with the organization, but a lot of our students, um, female students are part of UC Charge, which is a exercise group that there's a lot of students in that, that organization and they meet weekly, they go to different um, studios and different places around town um, to be physically active together and um, form those you know small groups and things like that and so that's great and then we also have a organization within our program that we encourage students to be involved with called Ada Sigma Gamma and I'll let Reagan talk more about that but I just wanted to point that out as well as just some opportunities that are related to kind of health and wellness and specific to our program. Yeah, the, the students in the Ada Sigma Gamma group, and we have a lot of students that are involved in that, it's a great way for students to be able to do health education um, as a student. So a lot of the opportunities that they do, they work with the Student Wellness Center on campus, which does health and wellness programs for the university. So they might um, help this them with things like Stress Less Fest, which is a week that they do during finals week to help um, students de-stress. So they might help put on um, different events and things like that, or they've also, uh, in the fall, they had a mental health panel where they had individuals coming and talking about um, mental health issues and talking about the stigma and, and resources for students on campus. So they do various things and the students determine each semester what topic they're going to be covering. Okay, yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing about that. And then kind of tying back everything to the importance of experiential learning. Uh, here you see it's a big part of our culture and it's really important, obviously, you know, with, within the very, um, with our, within this program, you know, students are gonna have internship opportunities. Uh, but even beyond that, there are things that are happening as a part of your, uh, your courses or, you know, just different experiences that are available to students as you are going through and progressing through the program. And so I uh, would love to hear more, you know, if you guys have any um, experiential experiences, uh, examples of experiences students are able to do, whether it's a part of their coursework or, you know, some examples of some of the internship opportunities that students are, are able to do in this program. Sure, I'll start off and talk a little bit about um, the public and community health students and then um, Dr. Buchanan can talk about uh, exercise and fitness. But um, within the, you know, we think it's really important that our students get experience and really understand what it means to be a public health professional um, as a student and, and, and help provide them with those skills, but also start using those skills as a student. So we have several opportunities um, for individuals to get involved in doing volunteering and things like that throughout the time. Um, or throughout their time in the program. We do have a few classes where they can actually get some service learning opportunities. For example, we have a epidemiology class that students take and part of um, students are actually connected with different organizations in the community to do something. So for example, um, we've had students that work with the American Heart Association and part of what they were doing is blood helping um, do blood pressure screenings for individuals and understand the numbers and um, that sort of thing. So there are various opportunities where we want students to be able to begin using those skills. Um, the other thing to know is that several of our faculty members have also worked in the field. So myself, Dr. Buchanan, um, as well as uh, Professor Lynch, who um, students usually see in that first year or so, um, we have worked in the field and bring that experience into, um, into the classroom. So, you know, what was it like to actually, uh, you know, to work as a professional in health education? And so I think students get a um, a lot of that real world experience, not only in the classroom, but within some of the organizations that um, that's, that students can be a part of um, and that sort of thing. Thank you. Yeah, um, and I can speak a little bit more um, with the exercise piece. I think we talked about it a little bit ago as well as some of the locations that students go, but um, you know, some of the ones that stand out to me are again, I think we're really lucky being in this area because we do have so many different opportunities. We have everything from as specific as we've got a student who's an aerialist and does, you know, is a performer for places like or shows like Cirque du Soleil. And so he's actually developing um, strength in 
strength and training program specific for that population with an organization here in Cincinnati. Um, so really students just doing some really unique things. Um, students who are going into like a medically based fitness field where they're working with people who ha are recovering from a cardiac event or cardiac surgery and doing that more cardiac rehab and clinical side. Um, students who are working with older populations and some of our assisted living facilities around town. Student who is out in Arizona right now working with uh, ath professional athletes. So it really runs the whole um, range as far as uh, what students are looking to get out of their experience, but we hope that through their first three and a half years, um, potentially less, depending on how fast they get through, but um, through those, the coursework leading up to that internship, that they really narrow down where, where their strengths and their interest areas are. Students do take a professional development course with myself and Professor Johnson, and we do a lot of that. It's really designed to be either a semester or two prior to the internship, so they can really narrow down and get more experiences, do a little bit more self-assessment to really see uh, where their strengths and their interests lie before going to that internship. That's awesome. So you actually help them with, you know, even if they, someone needed to help building a resume kind of a thing, yes. you do all that stuff with them. That's cover awesome. resume, cover letter development, interviewing skills. We do a lot of practical like um, group work and we bring in professionals from the field to evaluate them on interviewing skills and just all kinds of things related to that negotiating salary, job searches, things like that. Okay. That's awesome. Great to know that. It's good resources for students there. Um, and I love the examples you share because it does show like the, the depth of, you know, you may not realize the opportunities that are out there, you know, but if you have an interest in working with people and you, and you want to make a difference and uh, especially in, in the lives and in, in the health of, of an individual or group, you know, there's a lot of ways that that could play out uh, for students. And it's interesting, you may not even realize what that might look like for you until you kind of get into the program and explore some of those options. So that's really cool. Yeah, and I think it's just really telling, too, of the amount of opportunities that are out there uh, upon graduation as well, that our field is so broad, there are so many opportunities, and this is a growing growing field, and there's going to be more and more demand for this type of um, degree. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and so I'm uh, kind of going to go into a little bit of a and a here, and I'm going to start addressing some of the questions that are, that are popping up on this thing. But uh, I also wanted to, you know, bring up the whole – uh, COVID-19 thing and, and all that's happening right now, you know, through, especially through um, your lens, um, through all of this, you know, are, what are you seeing as far as, you know, do you know of any students that are out there being directly involved with, with assisting with this? Is this something that do we have, are we, are we doing any kind of involvement with this at all with, you know, preparing students for a situation that could, that this could come from? Um, I, I think I'll answer. I, I think I have an answer to your question. If I ask if this if this doesn't answer it, but I, I will say that um, you know one thing with the COVID nineteen um, outbreak right now is that you know our students are if they're on their internship right now, many of them are on the front lines um, and doing this sort of work. So we've got students that are working in health departments and trying to help them address you know how do we how do we address this issue now. Um, which is, you know, a pretty cool experience for our students. Um, they're also getting really creative with how they're doing their work. So they're, they're on internships and they might be quarantined in their house, but they're still doing work um, for their internships. And so, you know, a great experience for, for all of them to be able to, um, you know, be creative and, and be able to, um, you know, really contribute in, a, in an important way. Okay. Yeah, thank you. That's great. That's, that's, I, was, I was curious about that and how that was maybe impacted by the students in the program. Yeah, and um, even um, with exercise and fitness, we've got, I'm sure many of you have seen if you're on social media, you know, several places doing at home workouts and live streaming workouts. So students are part of that with the organizations that they're with, you know, or whether they're doing um, virtual personal training sessions and things like that. So they're definitely um, building on their skill set to be able to do those things and sort of learning um, as we go with the situation, um, but also helping facilities develop plans, especially earlier on when uh, before the gyms and facilities were closed, but as they were revamping kind of their risk management and their cleaning policies and procedures, how they communicated that with, with people was, um, they got to be a part of that too. Yeah, that's great. That's really cool. 
Um, so kind of looking at some of the questions that are here, there was one question as far as one, someone was a little bit more curious as to the process of switching majors and what that would look like. So maybe, maybe Kelsey or, or even any uh, professors, you know, do you guys have anything that you could speak into you know, the process of what that looked like? Um, I can speak a little to this, although this would really be a, this would really be what, what our advisors would help do. So we have students that um, switch into a major very frequently. In fact, that's where a lot of our students come from is transferring from other programs within the within the university. And so, um, you know, all it takes is a form that you fill out um, and the advisors can help them do that. Um, and, you know, what's great is if you do come in and maybe you're not a health education student already, um, and you've taken some classes out in, within another college, uh, you know, there's a lot of free electives and things that students can bring in. So we are a very transfer friendly program. Okay, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Uh, did anyone want to add anything to that? Okay, just want to make sure. Um, and one question here, what's the best part of being a student at UC? Um, I think my favorite part about being a student at UC is just the atmosphere of everyone is a Cincinnati fan, no matter where they come from. Like I came from Toledo, Ohio and coming here, I wasn't really sure because it's almost a split between uh, Bowling Green and the University of Toledo. We're here, everyone's about UC um, and just about Cincinnati in general. They love the area, they love the sports teams, they love the Bengals, even though they're terrible. They love the Reds, even though they're terrible. I mean, it's just a very loyal community. And that's something that I was, that I really enjoyed when I came and visited here. Um, and I just love just the college atmosphere. I like that we're so close to downtown and that we're still close enough to be able to participate in all the downtown activities, but we're also, um, we also have our own college town, which is also very nice. Okay, awesome. So uh, just maybe adding to that, what was it that made you decide to attend the university? Um, kind of like I said before, just how Cincinnati is just a loyal community and I didn't really picture myself anywhere else. I was deciding between staying at home at Toledo and then I came to UC on a visit and I actually went to a basketball game as like my visit and I just saw the crowd and how they just loved the team and just things like that and so I just told my mom I was like I don't care if I make the cheer team or not like I can see myself wearing red and black. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so maybe just giving it a minute here, if anyone has any additional questions, feel free to post those. Um, but I also wanted to take some time here to, you know, is there anything else that you, that anyone wanted to add uh, or to um, talk about when it comes to this program and the opportunities that are out there for students? I would just say, um, you know, like a, several and all of the programs in our college were very student-centered. Um, again, we have a great relationship with the advising team. Um, so we're really with you every step of the way. Um, and I think that's one thing that's really unique about our program is that you are, like Reagan said, you just jump right in your first semester. I know uh, for me, I attended a, a different university for my undergraduate career. And I, you know, I wasn't even taking health-related courses until my third year. And so you know, it's just really nice that you get plugged in with your cohort and your professors and the content right away. And the, the other thing that I would say is that, you know, we are, there are a lot of opportunities to develop our students as professionals, a lot, not just in the um, in courses. So we offer a lot of professional development opportunities such as lunch and learns where we might be talking about different ways to get involved or um, different certifications that you could get or um, internship opportunities. We also host an involvement fair once a year. We do a mock interview day once a year. So we make sure that our students are really prepared to be, be professionals when they go into the field. So there's a lot of that type of education that goes on both in and outside the classroom. Okay, awesome, thank you so much. Um, and so I do like to have our social media channels up here. If you want to follow us on other channels, feel free to do so. Uh, we have a lot of stuff happening on also Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. Uh, 
on top of Facebook. But if uh, you have any questions, feel free to give me a call, send me an email. If you want to get connected to any of the individuals that you heard from tonight, I'd be happy to connect you with them and answer any additional questions you had as well about our program and the options that are available to you here. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this and this was informative for you. Uh, we are once again just thrilled and excited that you uh, are considering UC and that this might be a place you would call home. Um, and, and hopefully you got a little bit of a taste of, of the culture and the atmosphere of our college and just how uh, it truly is a family atmosphere and, and we're here to assist you and we're here to help you with, throughout the whole process of just being here in, in, in an institution and, and helping you thrive and be successful and whatever that looks like for you. And so we are um, just happy that you are that here tonight that you're listening and, and hopefully we, we get to see you on campus in the near future uh, and, and, and get to be a part of, of this next step in the journey for you. Um, thank you, um, Dr. Buchanan and Professor Reagan Johnson and, and Kelsey for being here tonight. Um, really appreciate your time and sharing the experiences and information about this program. Thank you. Yep, thanks for having us. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, so that's going to conclude our session tonight. Like I said, if you have additional questions, whether it's from me or some of the individuals that were here, uh, please email me. I'll be happy to either field those questions or, or connect you with anyone. If you wanted to have a conversation with someone, be happy to do so. Um, I'll leave this up for a few for a minute or two. But if you, uh, but once again, stay healthy, stay safe, and uh, have a great evening. Thank you.